Okay, in this final part of this short tutorial series, now we'll just kind of combine everything all together and show you what other kind of effects you might be able to look into. So what I have in here is two objects in, this, in the scene right now. One is, uh, let's see if we just wind it backwards. Let's see, there's there's this sphere here, and but it has a particle system associated with it now. And then there's another sphere here, and it has a... Let's see, let's go get this. This is, has a mesh volume associated with that. All right, so I'm using the mesh volume color in the one, one case, and I'm using particle colors in the other case in order to see here's material one for this guy right here. All right, so and in the case of the particles, so what happens is now they're both painting, they're both moving on their own thing. So let's start from the beginning and just see what it looks like real quick. So now the particles are blasting into the scene, and then this thing is carving into the scene, you know, at that depth, because remember we have that paint surface beneath it, all right? So you can start getting a lot of effects, especially if you take this particle system here, you know, and you crank it up. Let's, well, we won't crank it up too much. This is fairly processor intensive, this type of stuff. So you need a pretty big, bad computer to do these type of effects for a lot of patients, because even this, these should ideally be subdivided a couple more times to make the effect look much nicer. So you need a lot of RAM. All right, now let's run it from the beginning, and I'll show you what else. Uh, where they're spitting them out faster, but that's probably not really the effect that I wanted. But um, let's spit them out slower so they just stay locally. All right. Well, at least there's more from showing up in the scene. But that's easy enough. You just redire redirect your particles how you want. But we should be able to come into here and then in dynamic paint, you know, maybe, you know, it's far away from the scene so the colors are cool or something at the beginning of the, let's see, we're at frame one here. So maybe it's a cooler color like that. We should be able to keyframe that. Oh, yes, yeah, you put a little line around it there. Then we'll move up to the next frame like this. And maybe it's closer to the surface, creating more friction and compression against the surface. So it's going to be a warmer color like that. All right, now let's run it. Let's see what happens. So now theoretically, the colors should go from this blue as they go. Did I set that keyframe? Did I forget? The, I must have forget the. Did I forget to press I when I was with the mouse? Okay, there it is. Maybe I forgot to press it. All right. Now let's see. All right. So it's blue. Let's see if it's making its transition to that orange color. Yeah, it's more violet, right? As it's going. Right, and it gets to the color. So then all this stuff comes into play, as you can see. So then you can really start, you know, tearing up your surface. But, you know, like I said, what would really help is if this was just, you know, a simple plane focused in that direction or, you know, shooting. So it's the shape of the object that makes a difference. That sphere doesn't really cut it. All right, just wanted to point that out because this is enough information. If you have a fast computer, you can do a lot of really cool, cool effects with dynamic paint. All right, and I'll see you in the next lesson.